Hello, my name is Sarah Willoughby. I'm the author of He's Making Diamonds, a Teen's Thoughts on Faith Through Chronic Illness. I am a chronically ill writer and blogger and author, and today I want to talk to you all about how to write with brain fog. Brain fog is not fun. I remember the first time I experienced brain fog, I didn't know what it was a thing. I didn't know what it was called. I remember telling like my mom, I'm like, I just feel so foggy. Like, it's foggy and <laughs> well, little did I know that was an actual thing. Brain fog is something that a lot of chronically ill warriors and the chronically ill writers deal with and it can make writing impossible feeling. It's hard, you know, there were times with my brain fog when I couldn't comprehend a single sentence someone spoke to me, let alone string together a sentence that would make sense to someone else, or a paragraph, or a blog post, or an article, or a story, you know, or a novel, or a book. There was just no way that with my brain fog I could make something make sense. And that's really hard. It was really disappointing because I would write something and I knew that it wasn't as good as it could be. I knew that I could, if only it wasn't for this brain fog, I could write better. I could write more. I could write something that would make a, what I thought, I thought it would make a bigger and better impact. So that was so frustrating. It's like, not only did it steal so much, did my chronic illness steal so much, but it had stolen something that I, that's really important to me, my writing. Here's the thing though. God can use your foggy writing and the first thing I want to tell you today is to not let brain fog steal your writing. Don't let brain fog stop you from writing. Yes, it it messes with your writing. Yes, it, it's going to change it and, and it's going to be something that you have to struggle through and it's not easy, but don't let it stop you from writing. Maybe your writing won't be as good as your writing might have been if you didn't have brain fog. Maybe the grammar is going to be a little weird, but don't let that stop you from writing because your message and your voice can shine through and make an impact even when the grammar is not perfect, even when there's some typos, even when it doesn't flow as smoothly as you want it to because it's just, yeah. <laughs> um, also, here, so here's some practical tips for dealing with the brain fog. I don't want you to let it stop you, and I know that it, these tips are not going to make it easy because it, brain fog is not easy. Writing is not easy. Combine the two, it's just like, what in the world is going on? But here's some tips that I have learned through years of writing with brain fog. So first, write down your ideas. This honestly is something every writer needs to do. I don't understand why we don't do it so much. You know, I picture that scene in the Lego um, movie <laughs> where he's like, okay, I got to write that down, you know, the prophecy, or I'm going to forget. Write it down or you're going to forget. <laughs> Don't think, oh, I'll remember this or, oh, it's okay, I, you know, I'm in the middle of something. If you have an idea, I don't care if you're in bed or on the toilet or hiking. I mean, if you're chronically ill, you're probably not hiking, but write it down. <laughs> that is so important. Because, you know, when I came to my book, He's Making Diamonds, I wrote it after a long, it, it took a lot of months of, and years, honestly, of, of con, 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 collecting <laughs> ideas, speaking of brain fog, you know, collecting ideas and, and, and all of the things that, that went into the book were year I, I had a stack of journals that I went through as I wrote. I had sticky notes galore. I had written stuff on toilet paper, on paper plates, on paper towels, on napkins, on whatever I could find, on receipts. And it was, um, but I didn't forget it. So yeah, write stuff down. Seems obvious. Here's the question. Do you do it? <laughs> Um, the other, the second tip that I have for you is to find some editors that you trust. This is super important, especially if you're going to be sharing your writing um, and you have brain fog. <laughs> for me, especially as a blogger with brain fog, this was really helpful. I, I collected a few people, you know, two or three people collected. I, I, I connected with two or three people that really knew me well and who I knew would see beyond the, the fogginess, you know, they would see 
and they, they knew me enough to know, okay, when I wrote something that implied something, I didn't mean it to because of my brain fog. When I wrote something that w came across the wrong way because of my brain fog, they knew me well enough to go, okay, I know Sarah doesn't mean this. Let's help her figure out how to communicate what she does mean. So that finding editors who know you well is super important, editors that you trust, especially like writing about theological stuff. I would imply stuff that was theologically incorrect, which I didn't mean to, because I was just, I couldn't think clearly enough to communicate it well. So having editors that you can trust is super important. Um, and they also, just having editors will help you when you don't know if something's communicated the right, coming across the right way, have them say, you know, ask them, well, how, how is this coming across? And also just with typos and, and spelling and grammar, have some, some editors. Another pair of eyes is good. This is, it's good for every writer, but with brain fog, don't try and do it all yourself. Give yourself some help. Get some other outside perspectives. It's it's not that hard. <laughs> and people are happy to help usually. If you find the right people, if they're not happy to help, don't ask them. Find someone else. But if you can get to know another writer or, or even just a family, you know, have a family member or friend read it. They don't have to know about grammar to, to realize that you spelled that word wrong. So yeah, get some editors. <laughs> And the last, I, the last tip I have for you today is to set aside some mental energy spoons. So if you haven't heard of the spoon theory, go ahead and Google it. I won't go into all that right now, but basically prioritize your writing. <laughs> when you have a chronic illness, you have very limited energy and you also have very limited mental energy a lot of the time. So you ration it, you know, if your mental energy is best first thing in the morning, then take the time to prioritize, to use your, to write then. You know, if your mental energy is best after you've eaten food, do that. All of these tips today are very basic, but they're very important. <laughs> and the basic stuff is really what helped me write a book, run a blog, <laughs> run a magazine, all of those things while I was so foggy. I was so brain foggy. I couldn't communicate well. I couldn't I couldn't keep track of things. So yeah, write stuff down, set aside some mental energy, and don't be, uh, get some editors, and don't let brain fog stop you from writing, okay? I hope that you have a great rest of your day, and happy writing.